Hi, I'm Phil from Driftworks. Hi, I'm his buddy Jay. And we're back on the 964 Turbo, and I promise you we're actually going to make some progress instead of going forwards and then backwards like we did in the last episode. <laughs> So we're going to attempt to do some pretty uninteresting stuff like fitting a new clutch, which we're going to show you a little bit of. But I mean, that is something that's been ruining this car since you got it. It has. It's what you, makes you hate driving it. Apart from it feeling like a Beetle. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you don't like that bit either. No. <laughs> Jay used to have a Beetle, his wife did. It just reminds him too much of that, except it's got 600 wheels. It's identical, back. except for the cost. <laughs> <laughs> the looks are slightly different than pretty no, much. Sad, it? No, yeah, it's sad. <laughs> but yeah, I quite like it. Uh, but I hate the clutch also. It's got an OS Geek and clutch in it, um, triple plate, which is just impossible to get the bike point. So um, that's coming out in favour of uh, some Saks stuff, single plate stuff. But actually, Jay's done quite a bit of work to the car in other areas. So I thought I'd quickly show you what he's been up to first. What else have we been up to? Because we have actually. We did do a couple of days last week, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. We... But, but as usual, forgot to pick up the camera because we. Well, not... yeah, it's been too long. It has, um, yeah, out of practice. We've wired up your two steps so you can snap some more rock arms. Because <laughs> you know that what that's what life's about. <laughs> yeah, I did well enough. <laughs> you definitely would have. So, yeah, this is, this is my little two step button there. You know, um, I'm sorry, Matt at Fern Sport. <laughs> I might be giving you a call soon, but you know. He won't be that sorry when you're paying him again, will it? <laughs> it probably will be. It'll probably be pretty sad. Uh, we got a little list of other things. So actually, one of the things I've just had done this morning is um, I've just had a Cat5 Smart Track uh, tracker fitted to this thing as well. A little bit of an upgrade security wise, because yeah, these things are worth silly money nowadays. So. And they're secured by an old fashioned 80s key. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's now secure. Um, what else have we been doing? We've got, we're on the case with trying to, you'll notice the clock's poking out a little bit here. I'm trying to get a display that doesn't look too horrific, like an, a digital display that hooks to the Haltech to display the, the uh, some, yeah, the CAN data, some of what What's going on because driving it in the cold weather uh, and not him having visibility of what map switch we're on with the little uh, rotary dial that we've got um, yeah I saw on one of my little jaunts out I saw two bar boost on this thing which is absolutely no good no bueno as cool as it is and as cool as it sounded especially doing that little skid in the industrial estate that you um, saw in the intro to the last video <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I need a little bit of um, visibility of what's going on with the car. So one yeah, it'd be of my... nice to see what the ECU scene as well. Yeah, right? the um, 200-year-old Japanese gauge. Yes, exactly. So this gauge down here, as cool as it is, it seems to overread by about 0.1 or 0.2 bar. So a little bit of clarity of what the map sensor in the ECU is seeing would be good. But yeah, a little readout there is kind of my idea, but it's obviously a bit complicated by this having a load of warning lights in it as well for uh, like the engine running the belt for the air cooled um, fan. I don't think that's that big. I, th I, don't, I don't think so. I think no, be... that, that one's just a switch. I don't... What else is in there? Um, there's alternator light, but again, we can get that's a digital easy. thing to yeah. read out. But yeah, my priority is to not make it look too horrific. I don't mind if it's um, kind of a modern LCD screen, but once it's off, it'd be nice if it, it still looked like a clock. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, um, what else have we been doing? What else have I been doing? Let's have a look at the list. We actually have a list again, because we're having to oh, work that way again. Oh, Align the headlights. Oh yeah, important stuff. Uh, fix the fan on the heater panel. Oh yeah, noisy fan. Yeah. Uh, we still got see, some top there, look, clutch options. That's a big job for this week. Clutch options arriving on Thursday from Germany, from FVD Brombacher. I've given in, I'm just going for a single plate sax, sort of OEM. Uh, replacement clutch and Make flywheel. Pleasant. Yeah, an RS flywheel because even though I'm really used to driving this thing, it's still an absolute nightmare and you're constantly living on the edge of stalling, aren't you, Jack? Well, you are for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
if I ever want to have a hope of asking Jay to drive this for me ever again, I need to fix the clutch. <laughs> It'd definitely rather tow it, wouldn't you? <laughs> Next job on the Porsche is to change the steering wheel boss. This one had a horn contact, old fashioned style, on a little springy pin. If I can focus on it, like that, that rubs on the slip ring and it was always a bit scratchy you could always hear a sort of a grinding noise as you turned which was annoying phil so we've ordered a momo the momo boss which then needs this kind of horn contact which we had to get from a porsche dealer apparently it just slots into that hole there but we'll find out with that back together it's time to stick this new boss on uh, i forgot to mention earlier but fully available at driftworks.com Quite a lot of them are on the shelf here. If not, we can usually get them in a day or so. I'm not gonna pretend it went straight on. The horn contact took a bit of fiddling to line it up, but we're there now, in business. Let's get the wheel on. Woohoo! Now we've got a working horn on the steering wheel. Well, not that we didn't have before, but now we've got a horn. On the list is get a better horn. Hit the horn, Webby, let's... Uh, Show the folks how it sounds. Uh, yeah, it seems those crazy Japanese have put an air horn in it. Unless that's how they are, but that doesn't look very... That looks doesn't original. Look very German. No, this looks more Japanese than German. Mad Japanese. And that looks factory, so let's see what's going on here. Now I feel quite silly. Oh. I would hope that the low horn isn't working and that's not what it's meant to sound like. I guess we'll find out. Hey Webby, that was factory. F yeah, I can't say that. <laughs> Never. Never. <laughs> it turns out the air horns are working and this horn isn't, but more excitingly, what have you got there? Sticker, just looks like a white sticker. Yeah. Original, not original, fake. Remanufactured Porsche Mizwa sticker because obviously I replaced the uh, rear screen with one without a wipe hole in it. And one that wasn't covered in scratches after I tried to get the window tint off. Yeah, that was <laughs> quite a disaster. So there's two problems with this. One is that you have to do it from the inside and that sucks. So I'm gonna to have to mark up on the outside and then I guess remove a bucket seat to do it. I mean, you're not the sort of person to be particular about where it is. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I should give props to um, a guy called Peter, I think his name was, who a year or so ago when I was first looking into do the, doing this actually designed this sticker for me. Um, sent me over the file for it, really super sound of him. It's not what I ended up using, but instead what I decided to do was get one from um, eBay in Japan for £77 for a sticker. Seven, seven pounds. Keen there. Well, I was gonna have to work out how to get this printed in reverse and potentially make a few of them and potentially get the size wrong and all this. And then I thought, you know what? I'll just, just get I'll press one. the button. I mean, sometimes you just gotta buy the real one. It's not the real one, that's the problem. What I mean, mean? It's, it's from Japan, so it's on a Japanese um, <laughs> vinyl, but it is not the real one. It's it, They don't exist anymore, you can't buy them. So oh. yeah, it's remade. I think the real ones are old stock. You, you're probably looking at 300 plus quid. For all right, second. sometimes you've gotta buy an expensive <laughs> fake. So my little girl's kind of grown out of the seat we were using in the 964. Not in terms of actually fitting in the seat, but now because this is so bulky, actually the, the seat takes up so much space in the back, it becomes a problem the more she grows. So we have now genuine of the era Porsche child seat, which is it's perfect, it has like a super slim back to it, actually goes back quite far. Um, I've also fitted some new back seats, the uh, upper part of it, these fold down. Uh, it looks pretty superb back here, and I'm sure Hannah will absolutely love it. So the horn tested out okay. So I've made this little 
repair loom here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's just a little piece of wire with some plugs on there. I'm going to plug it in and we're going to hope that the horn now works. Oh, let's give it a test. Sweet. That's the little horn only. Right, it's all plugged in. Let's get ready for this symphony of horn. Trifecta of beeping. <laughs> Woo! Tick that off the list. It's what? What, need a what all the horns? Yeah. Don't make any difference, do <laughs> They're like, fucking, I <laughs> don't care about you, mate. If there's anyone driven around here, you'll know it's pretty lawless. Next job, mount rotary switch. So Phil's been driving around for a couple of years now with this thing, with the boost control switch wobbling about in the glove box. And it's quite confusing because you don't know which way up it was or you didn't know which way up it was. But now I've made a little bracket. We've used a little sticker. I've actually used the aim sticker because the Haltech one's so big. And I'm gonna fit this inside the old ashtray. Secret boost. Let's hope it all goes back together and I'll show you it done. Looks promising. Oh, oh. Ah, boost. It's nice, isn't it? And then, you know, I thought we'd better make sure it's working on the computer. So this is the special number here. Position one. I've probably just put my arm in the way, haven't I? But two, three, four and then maxed out after that. It's just all the power, so we'll put it on one for him. All the power. Yes. So, clutch. So, clutch. You seem to have a iOS Gaikon with push clutch, was it? If you That's right. one of the videos last year, we spent ages, I think we filmed it, yep. putting a concentric slave in it. Yep, and before that, I've replaced the clutch. Um, with a brand new with brand new discs and everything like that thinking that might be the issue I've also done check the pedal stuff. We've changed hoses uh, Yeah, it's just how they are. It just doesn't work. It's just right, not what looks but it's yeah. just evil uh, So what we've got here, this is from FVD Brombacher. It is their sax kit I think this is I can't remember the numbers It's not the highest horsepower version because that basically means you get a uh, impossibly heavy clutch and clutch pedal and this probably will be quite stiff i imagine um but the this is like a 580 foot pound version which should be fine for you're mine. saying they use this on a gun for work sort of yeah i think they use some, a similar sort of single plate clutch uh, system on the gun for works car which is something ridiculous like 800 horsepower so if it can work for them with a reasonable clutch pedal then hopefully this lower power version will work for me uh, yeah and um, one of the things that i really didn't want to do when getting rid of the os geeking was to lose the lightweight flywheel so it's got an rs flywheel and they're great these things because they fit like i think even down to 997s and stuff like that. i think they all kind of use the same clutches so yeah a uh, new clutch cover which is a pull type which means that we need to reconvert to pull which means that on this very dirty desk you can see some small components from a porsche which add up to roughly 900 pounds worth of stuff so yeah like a bail. yeah we um we know that it's going to need some of the stuff that's in might already be in there but it will need refreshing and then we don't have things like that and we don't have the slave cylinder which is in there and i figured i'd going to use I mean, oem because that's split we do yeah and if i'm going to use sort of oem style clutch i decided that i might as well use oem parts should last the lifetime of the car then hopefully um so yeah these are the parts uh jay have fun it's all right it's not like i've done it before <laughs> <laughs> right you ready for the lethal jack come down Came out here to 
right. There we go. So, this, yeah, this, this is, is the bit where we need to, need to remember yeah, how many, because that's where that goes. Yeah, you go in the bottom there, so yeah. here. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. Well, the the, so yeah, there you can see the missing bit. I am glad that I ordered pretty much everything that I could see on the diagram. Because yeah, it looks That's like we need it. Pipe. Well, the pipe we can make up, can't we? In fact, the pipe we think maybe we've got on the shelf back there. Possibly on Possibly. the old side. Yeah. It's the same as that, yeah. Yep. Before I tidy up <clears throat> this mess, I think we'll get rid of the other really messy job for the day, and that is change this CV boot. I mean, it doesn't have much goo left in it anyway, but anyway, let's fix it. You got a greasy head. Got greasy everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best job, isn't it, really? This is going in, right? Yes, go. Hopefully. The good fight. Oh, I'm just stabbing, I'm going to stab myself in the eye with a bit of stick. Just finish yourself off after that start a course of brake cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, brake fluid, not even brake cleaner. Fluid. And yeah, then brake cleaner. brake cleaner in my eye, but I didn't. <laughs> Just so people are aware, we do have an eye wash station here as well, but... We've got a sink and small feet. <laughs> Jay barely uses soap, so... I do, yeah. Wreck my free jumper. But most importantly, CV boot is attached. That's one job off the list. I guess we'll move on to the clutch tomorrow. I've removed the old concentric slave now from the gearbox and fitted the new mechanism so yeah new fork standard slave we still need to order a clutch hose because we've chopped the one that we used to have to put to put a dashboard fitting on it but that gearbox is now ready to go in we've got a slight complication that we've got either the wrong flywheel or there's a problem with the flywheel anyway uh, we don't have a spigot bearing and our flywheel doesn't have a ring gear and a timing gear on it. So Phil's currently working on a solution. Um, I don't know if that's gonna be a ring that bolts onto there or a completely different flywheel yet, but that's paused this for now. Let's go and have a bank holiday. <laughs> <laughs>